Hello and welcome. This is Joy News Today with me, Francisca Kakra Forsen. Coming up in the headlines, closure of Joapon Textiles Limited affects education of second cycle students in the area. More than seven communities want to evacuate as the Ghana Water Company Limited spills excess water from the Wager Dam today. Citizen vigilante Martin Amidu accuses investigative journalist Anas Arimea Anas of operating a fraudulent company. We've got details of these plus sports, business and entertainment coming up. Please stay. Thanks for staying with us. The Ghana Water Company Limited will spill excess water from the Wager Dam today. Management is thus informing individuals, institutions, organizations and companies with properties on the downstream side of the dam to note that the opening of the spillway gates may cause massive flooding along the lower course of the Dinsu River and it is essential for property owners and residents in the area to take immediate precautionary measures to protect life and properties. Uh, communities that are likely to be affected include Tetegu, Oblogo, Pambros, Salt, Lower MC, Lower McCarthy Hill, Weja, Bojo Beach, Ada, Kope, and other surrounding communities. Early on the AM show this morning, communications manager of the Ghana Water Company, Stanley Marty, said the original plan is to start spilling by midday. Reservoir. Okay, so we have stored enough to the extent that if we keep storing, then we will, uh, it will affect the, the safety of the dam. Okay, so the dam may collapse, and if it has to collapse, then uh, it will affect um, the whole of Accra for a very long time. Okay, so the best thing and uh, the wisest thing to do is, is to spill. Now, I've just said that the dam is of the reservoir, so you should know that the reservoir has uh, some capacity that it can store. So now we are going beyond its uh, maximum capacity. And uh, for this one, it is, it is not safe for us to exceed uh, because uh, the will collapse and take more uh, problems for us. Mm. So the best will be for us to, to, to spill. So when is the spillage going to happen? Exactly what time? Um, I'm very sure that we'll do that before midday today. We have used the public address system in going to the community to inform um, almost everybody uh, that the village is imminent. So it may happen anytime soon. We've also informed the municipal assembly, NATMO, uh, we've informed national security, and uh, all opinion leaders, assembly men, the chiefs, um, uh, community, the community leaders and, and, and all that. So we're giving adequate information and we're giving adequate uh, giving information to almost anybody uh, uh, when it comes to uh, the situation. So we are sure that the information is fine. And uh, we are also using a uh, suspense release to inform the general public, not only the people who live within that enclave, but the general public. Mm. So that um, um, if you have relatives or friends who live around, you can also um, advise them to, uh, mm. to forestall any eventuality. Communities like Tetegu, Oblogo, um, Adakope, uh, Bojo Beach, Pambos, so uh, will all be affected. And so all surrounding areas around that other area will be affected. So um, we have informed them adequately. Um, so Stanley, where should they relocate to? Um, Mama Lee, it's unfortunate, but this is within my remit because uh, um, all those living around that area uh, should know by now that it is not a safe place to live. So they, um, we don't expect that they still be around because this thing happens almost every year. My colleague Matilda Wemega is in the community and spoke to one of uh, the residents, Michael Latte. 
Okay, so are you aware that this period they're going to scale the dam? Yeah, we are aware. Okay. We have further information. Okay, so what's what are the necessary measures that the community is putting in place to forestall any eventuality? Well, uh, formally, when the security is coming, no information. They don't give any information. But these days, the assembly comes to inform the community that this is what is going to happen. For everybody to be careful to himself going to that side. Okay, but over this period, how bad does it affect those of you who live around the dam? Uh, formal, in fact, formally, they do so heavy this thing. Uh, the rains, due to the force of the rain, the water comes very heavy. So when they spread the dam, about uh, one feet, two feet, for that level, it affects uh, those at the, the dam side, at the, the, outside, yeah, the lower side. But nowadays, I think they do split frequently. So when they do the splitting down, it doesn't affect more like formerly when. It used to yeah. So when it's during the period, what do the community members do? Did you do you leave the community? Do you abandon the place and come back when the spilling is In fact, over? Uh, those around, what they normally say is they bought the land, so they don't do anything. When you are telling them even to abandon there for the meantime, they tell you no. So when it comes to this point, it is only the uh, the Nadmu who's coming to force them to abandon the place for the meantime. Yes, uh, but one would also say, yes, they bought the land. Yeah. Why are you asking them to, to leave the place? Because one particular issue people are raising is that the community leaders have sold the water ways to people to build on. So it comes back to the community leaders as well. Uh, in fact, uh, when it comes to this point, what I know is, it is not as two elders who show that areas to them. It is, I mean, some do acquire from any person they just come across. If you say any person, how? When they are because that, is it not regulated here? It is regulated. Mm -hmm. But before even you come, uh, they will come with their documents there. Mm -hmm. Then we also get, I mean, the dream that uh, this land was without any document. The document even is holding is a uh, fictitious one and he has already bought it from somebody already so the only thing you don't know what to do again because but let me find out from you who sells out it is the it is the true who should sell the land mm -hmm. it is the true elders who should sell the land so who sells the land now that's what i'm telling you at Remember, the Ghana Water Company, Stanley Mate, earlier said that the spillage should have started by now. Let's get on the ground and find out the situation. Matilda Wemega is there for us. Matilda, so what's the situation in the community now? Do we know if the spillage is happening or will happen? Yes, Francisca, I'm currently at the dam site, so any moment from now, uh, officials of the Ghana Water Company will be uh, will start the spilling. They, they told me in the next 15 minutes they should start the, the spilling, so we are still here waiting for them to, to begin this process. But what they are saying is that uh, they didn't want it to uh, want to. Uh, spill it today, but looking at the level they came to see this morning, which is at 48 feet, it's gone beyond the safe operation level, which is 47. So they have no choice than to spill. But for now, the spilling is not going to be something that is going to flood this whole community. But they are going to do it in stages, depending on the level that you'll be recording as the day goes by. Now, for those in the areas that are said to, or that are, uh, the communications uh, manager said will be affected, have they been yes. able to relocate, to move to somewhere else until after, or some of them are still there? No, mo mo all, almost all of them are. They are all here. They are still here. None of them had moved yet. They are saying that they are waiting to see uh, the level that uh, the, uh, the water would get to before they can move. And so the situation gets serious. That is when they will move. Because for now, what they have advised, uh, they've been advised not to do is to go and uh, not to go fishing. So uh, they've restricted themselves. They are on the lookout for the, the level that this uh, spilling will take. But for them, they won't move until the situation gets um, a bit serious, which I know, which we both know that it's, it's not quite the best. But they are saying that they are waiting on the Ghana Water Company and the NADMO to hear what next they'll be telling them. So based on the communication that will be given to them, they will decide what next action to, to take as to whether to relocate or to still be in the community. 
So, talking about uh, NADMO, have you seen any of the officials um, or have you heard from them? They, they, they were here a while ago, but they, they've, left, they've gone back to the community. But they tell me that they would be back here in the next 15 minutes. That is when the spilling is expected to take place. What did they say about the uh, residents' insistence on staying in the area while the spilling well, happens? For them, for them, what they are saying is that there's very little they can do about this whole situation because one, many of these uh, residents have built on waterways. They, they, can't, they don't have control over that. So they are asking that we speak more with the assembly because they give the permits for these people to build along waterways. And I, I also spoke with a, a member of the, 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 the traditional leaders and he told me that they are not the ones who, who sell these lands out to people to build on waterways. So it's a back and forth something. No one wants to take a responsibility for it. But one thing we all know for sure that if this spelling should take place, many of these residents living around Tetegu, Oblogo, and Pambros, and Loa, and Makati Hill are definitely going to be affected. Tilly, we are concerned about you, uh, your safety, because you're there and the spillage will be happening. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> no, where, where I am currently, uh, nothing of that. It won't happen. You know, it's at a very lower level. So where we, we, where we are positioned now is not somewhere that we will be affected. So be rest assured, we are safe. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. That's Matilda Wemega, reporter uh, at Wager. Uh, she's monitoring the spillage, which should be happening in a few minutes. Now, anti-corruption crusader Martin Amidu has taken another jab at investigative journalist Anaz Arimiel Anaz, describing his Tiger IPI firm as a fraudulent and unregistered outfit. In his latest piece, Mr. Amidu accuses Anaz Arimiel Anaz of, quote, acting unconstitutionally with an unregistered and fraudulent Tiger IPI in promoting an Orwellian Big Brother state and McCarthyism in the country, unquote. My colleague Jahunyan has been going through the document. That's with him, his, his first point. His first point is the fact that um, per his investigations, Tiger IPI is not um, a registered company in terms of a registered private investigative company. To be a private investigator, to work within the security and apparatus of Ghana, it needs to go through the uh, Minister of Interior. Yeah. And he's saying that according to the records that are available to him, um, there's no record of Tiger IPI being licensed or permitted by the Minister of Interior to carry out the business of private investigations. So that is one hand. So he's saying that if you, you haven't been licensed by the Minister of Interior, at least you should be a limited liability company. And in that regard also, he thinks that there are problems because he's saying um, what has been registered when he went through um, the records that are available um, at the uh, registry, it's not Tiger IPI, but it's Tiger IPI Media Limited. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not going to assume that Tiger IPI and Tiger IPI Media Limited are one and, this okay. and the same entity, even though they do have the same owner. You can have a single owner who, who has exactly. separate entities. True. And for instance, Chris Trim has <coughs> Joy FM and Adam FM. We are still separate entities. So um, for him, that, that, is the, that is the case. Uh, the second thing that he says proves that Tiger IPI is fraudulent and is actually a dummy company um, is the fact that he feels that it's owned by the same person who is politically affiliated to this government, and I'm quoting him here, and has been clandestinely employed and paid by the government to undertake covert operations not normally and lawfully undertaken in persons of policing and surveillance power. So he's saying that Tiger IPI has actually is actually an agent. Um, of the government. Okay. So, so Joe, I'll, I'll let you hold there. But I'm, I'm seeing this thing that that, that is uh, on the screen now is the Tiger IPI website. So, mm -hmm. which website is this? So, he's it, the, the whole Tiger IPI phenomenon for for my Martin Amidu is quite confusing because they have a website here, and this website is only for Tiger IPI. Not, and he's also once again not assuming that it's the same Tiger IPI that we all know that carried out the investigations, or nor is it the same Tiger IPI Media Limited has been registered. And on that website, the first of the clients, if you look in the um, far left-hand corner, um, the clients there, the first person that they have mentioned the government on, of the, Ghana. Yeah, on the website is the government of Ghana. And um, for him, if your primary client is a government, then it raises questions of integrity and independence and actually carrying out your work, especially work that is related to corruption and keeping public office holders accountable um, for the money that they spend.
You're watching John News today with me, Francisca Kakwa Falls. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll bring you some politics. Please stay. Hello again, you're watching Joy News Today. Now, General Secretaries of Political Parties in Ghana have asked the Electoral Commission AC to release a timetable for elections in 2016. The General Secretaries of the ruling National Democratic Congress, NDC, New Patriotic Party, NPP, Convention People's Party, CPP, and the People's National Convention, PNC, met under the auspices of the Institute of Economic Affairs, IEA, to deliberate on election and other related matters ahead of next year's Polls. General Secretary of the People's National Convention, Bernard Bona, spoke to Joy News earlier about some recommendations. A wide range of issues, but largely bordering on uh, preparations towards election 2016, and in particular with reference to the work of the Electoral Commission and the happenings within the Electoral Commission. Indeed, we, as political parties under the IEA, for Ghana political parties, their platform, um, wanted the EC to bring out a clear timetable of activities and programs that they intend to undertake leading to um, election 2016. Mm. And as you are aware, political parties have our own programs that we have to draw. We have our own activities that we have to um, schedule. And so when we schedule our activities, and we do not have that of the electoral commission, there may be clash of activities. And do you do know that political parties are the foremost actors in our election process? And when there is a clash, maybe we are organizing a rally, we are organizing our manifesto launch, we are doing some other activities that enhance the fortunes of our party. And the electoral commission is also running a program somewhere that requires our presence. It becomes a daunting issue for us. So with a clear timetable from the Electoral Commission, the political parties are able to marshal themselves and put their own programs okay. so as to ensure that we are available to participate. Bernard Mona added that the General Secretaries are particularly worried about the relationship between EC and STL. The information that we are taking informally today is that STL is managing the data and has access to the data of the Electoral Commission and is the one that determines which data is right and which data is not right. We want the EC to clarify that because we think that the data that we have is for Ghana and that the FPL, which is a foreign company, having direct access to our data and certain may compromise the data that we have. And so the EC needs to clarify that. Beyond that, we need to invite some other IT companies to come and demonstrate to us what proposals they have in order to ensure that our data with the electoral commission is provided and protected. Above all, what is it that we can introduce to ensure that our biometric processes um, are not subjected to the whims and caprices of external bodies? So these are the things that we want the EC to clarify so that at the end of the day, all of us, for that we are dealing with an institution that cannot take Daniel for a ride. Well, multiple time flag bearer of the People's National Convention, Dr. Edward Mahama, this morning uh, addressed the media on his political future after submitting his forms to contest to lead the PNC in the 2016 elections. Many Ghanaians are unaware of the fact that the first time ever a presidential candidate in Ghana voluntarily conceded defeat to another candidate was 1996 when the PNC candidate for president, Dr. Edward Nasigri Mahama, conceded first to the then candidate, Jerry John Rollins of the NDC. This concession was in the wake of the stolen verdict and the boycott of the parliamentary elections of 1992. It was, it was after our concession that the MPP candidate, Mr. J.A. Kufo, also conceded. That's keeping Ghana at peace. Again, in the 2000 election, it was the PNC candidate that first declared publicly that the nation was looking for change in that year's election. And that change was in the person of then-candidate J.A. Kufo, who went on to win the second round of elections 
and brought the MPP to power in 2001. Our, particip our participation in the first ever presidential debate in the 2000 elections enriched the Ghanaian democratic journey. The PNC family is dedicated to the peace and stability of this nation. This role to enrich, stabilize, and prosper this nation in the democratic journey shall not be mortgaged to individual selfish interests that rather endanger the peace, stability, and prosperity of this nation. It is in recognition of the noble role the PNC has played that I found it difficult to turn my back to the party at this hour uh, in Ghana. In politics or even in life, one should not turn your back to, the, to a person or group of people who need you because you may have need for them someday. I'm doing this sacrificially and at a great personal inconvenience. Therefore, in reciprocity, I expect that at the World National Delegates Congress, you will give me an overwhelming endorsement. I'm answering your call to come back in acknowledgement of the fact that for 16 years and over four election cycles, you kept sending me back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm grateful. Let me also take this opportunity to tell Ghanaians that Dr. Mahama is coming back to provide them with solutions to their numerous problems, ranging from doom so, youth unemployment, to falling health standards. Our ideas have helped our country a great deal. It is my hope that the many problem-solving policies we will be bringing out in the fullness of time as we approach 2016 will give Ghanaians no reason not to have Dr. Edward Nasikri Mahama as their next president. It is my hope that what the PNC has seen in me that informs them to want me back will now be seen by the Ghanaian electorate by the grace of God that what they have seen is incorruptible nature in a nation of endemic corruption engulfing the judiciary, principled and passionate for the nation, always ready to do what it takes to improve our people's life and asking what can I do for PNC and Ghana, not what can PNC and Ghana do for me. We have a great nation, and PNC and Edward Mahama will make it greater. God bless PNC, God bless Ghana. Thank you. So that's four-time flag bearer of the PNC, Dr. Edward Mahama. We'll take a break and bring you business. Please stay. Bank has indicated it will not be affected in any way by the Bank of Ghana's move to increase the minimum capital requirements for banks from the current 60 million cities to over 100 million cities. Managing Director Frank Edu Jr. says the proposed increment is still low. He spoke to Joy Business during the bank's Facts Behind the Figures session at the Ghana Stock Exchange, where the bank declared a profit after tax of a little over 114 million cities. The country's economic, economics is not right, the banks will suffer because we reflect the economic environment of the country. You know, so once the, the, the economy is stable and growing, yes, then the, there's a bright future for banking. All layers of financing. And I think that one of the best things that we did in this country was the community and rural banks. Absolutely. They serve a need, they serve a niche, and they provide purpose for farmers, etc., in the rural areas. Then comes the NBFIs. They are also um, very, very necessary. But the regulation and the husbanding of that sector of the financial system is important. Because the minute you allow them to, in an unbridled manner, begin to provide or offer service uh, um, interest rates, such high interest rates to people, giving them false hope, you understand me? It's, look, they offer interest rates that they can never redeem if called upon to redeem for them. Who, what are you going to do if, if I, I take money from you and give you 5% a month? How, what am I going to do with that money? Who am I going to lend it to? 
And when I learned it at 10% a month, what's the person going to do? Sell cocaine, slavery, to make that kind of return to be able to pay that deposit. So I think that a little bit more um, circumspection is needed in that area and a little bit more manage, management is required there, a little bit more supervision, rigorous supervision. Because day in day are these NBFIs as well collapse. Government is garnering support from private companies in its quest to enable 50% of the country's population access LPG technologies and clean cooking solutions by 2020. Government has started an aggressive campaign to distribute clean cooking stoves to rural communities under the Ghana Sustainable Energy for All Action Plan. Speaking to Joy Business at the Clean Cooking Forum here in Accra, Petroleum Minister Imano Boa said this will provide business opportunities for the private sector. Five years, the Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stoves has tackled the issue of smoky traditional stoves and associated health problems that affect women. The message has been simple. Cooking smoke shortens the lives of about 1.9 million people around the world every year and contributes to climate change. The campaign has gained momentum, culminating in efforts to save lives, money and the environment by creating a thriving global market for clean and efficient cookstoves and fuels. Minister of Energy and Petroleum, Emmanuel Amakofibwa, told the 2015 Clean Cooking Forum in Accra that government distributed 13,000 cylinders in 2014 and plans to send out even more by the end of 2015. We plan to scale up the distribution to 40,000 40, cylinders and kusto. So far, we have distributed about 20,000 and we are pushing to distribute the, the remaining 20,000 by the end of the year. We expect in the process to improve and increase access to LPG use in rural areas from the current 10%. It's the number that was got in 2012 uh, uh, to 15% by the end of 2016. Under the Rural LPG pro pro Promotion Program, which government is aggressively backing on, government distributes free cylinders, cook stoves, and all related accessories to beneficiaries in low access and low income areas in districts across the nation. A draft policy on LPG promotion has been completed as government looks at a future where gas cylinders will no longer be for sale. We should be able to distribute LPG to your household like a trash collection guys do it. You have a company that you have signed up to to distribute your uh, fill cylinders and the trucks will move around and drop all those fill cylinders and your time for pickup will be say every one week on Wednesdays and you just drop the empty in front of your house and it's picked up and it's filled and it's brought back. Some 500 leaders and experts from over 40 countries are attending the forum with the capacity of the Global Alliance to improve clean cooking solutions as well as showcase Ghana's own progress on the issue of clean cooking. Sports is next with Baba Atando. Don't go away. Let's do entertainment news now with Gladys or Sarah Redu. Hey, Gladys, hi, hi. looking yes. gorgeous. As always, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm well, and you? Uh, we'll be taking a bath soon because you're going to be talking yeah, about yeah, Lux. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about Lux. Okay. Lux has launched five new fragrances. Okay. And <laughs> well, let me tell you more about that right away. So Lux Beauty Soap has unveiled five new variants, a new look and new philosophy at an event that ignites the spark at the Mervyn Peak Hotel here in Accra. The star studded event witnessed the fragrances put into designs by seasoned designers from Ghana. You were given the blue to what informed your decision, what inspired it? And um, basically it's made, the blue variant is made up of minerals and it's inspired by the seaweeds in the sea. That's what influences the soap itself. So to bring that to life, I had to make a lot of beading to bring the seaweed, to bring the floriness, sexiness and sultriness of a woman because that is the point, to ignite the spark. For this is nude, I wanted to nude wake me up, my eyes wake me up, so I want something up from bed, sexy, sultry, soft, so it really, really influenced it a lot. <laughs> Sexy, feminine, and soft. And I'm happy I had the velvet touch 
because it works for me. It's the colors, the colors, the fragrance. Give me an inspiration because I have to have the locks. I, I felt the fragrance that it came with, and then what came to my mind is the colors, the touch of the of the rosette, the textile, the organza, the satins. I put all together to get this concept together. What does fragrance and design have in common? Fragrance gives you pictures. First of all, it gives you pictures of, uh, excuse me, sister, like a sexy woman, and how you cover the woman with the with the fragrance. Okay. Yeah. Quickly before we go, veterans in the country have tasked Ghanaians to respect the peace the country is enjoying. Warren's officer class one, Kuma Imano, spoke to John News on the sidelines of the World Poppy Day in Accra. Now, the day in, is in memory of Commonwealth soldiers who died in the line of duty. As far as you are wearing the uniform, you are a military man. If you come out, automatically you have to join them. So it's both for all of us. Now, you fought hard to ensure that we enjoy the peace that we are enjoying today. Oh. Do you think that we've taken that peace for granted? We have taken it granted because some of us don't know if there is something which is hard. Some say route. Some people haven't seen some, like say 66, 79 and 81. So when you talk about peace, they say, oh, forget, if you die, you die. This is how some people say. But I'm telling you, I'm giving you that we should pray to Almighty God that set of the thing doesn't happen again in our country. Based on what you saw, right? Yes, this is what I saw. But then, from... For joining you today, but you can log on to myjoyonline.com for more news. And on your screen right now is one of the stories. To air is human. Former DVLA boss begs after $3.6 million contracts jumped to $9.9 .9 million dollars also political parties demand 2016 elections roadmap from ec and you heard all about that earlier on joy news desk thank you very much for your company my name is francisca kakra forson bye bye